Like all Americans, you're worried about the threat of terrorism. But on top of that, as Muslim Americans, you also have another concern, and that is your entire community so often is targeted or blamed for the violent acts of the very few. The Muslim American community remains relatively small, so several million people in this country. And as a result, most Americans don't necessarily know, or at least don't know that they know, a Muslim personally. And as a result, many only hear about Muslims and Islam from the news after an act of terrorism or in distorted media portrayals in TV or film, all of which gives this hugely distorted impression. And since 9-11, but more recently since the attacks in Paris and San Bernardino, you've seen too often people conflating the horrific acts of terrorism with the beliefs of an entire faith. And of course, recently we've heard inexcusable political rhetoric against Muslim Americans that has no place in our country. No surprise, then, that threats and harassment of Muslim Americans have surged. Here at this mosque, twice last year, threats were made against your children. Around the country, women wearing the hijab, just like Saba, have been targeted. We've seen children bullied. We've seen mosques vandalized. Sikh Americans and others who are perceived to be Muslims have been targeted as well. I just had a chance to meet with some extraordinary Muslim Americans from across the country who are doing all sorts of work. Some of them are doctors. Some of them are uh, community leaders, uh, religious leaders. All of them uh, were doing extraordinary work, not just in the Muslim community, but in the American community. And they're proud of their work in business and education and on behalf of social justice and the environment and education. I should point out they were all much younger than me, which <laughs> is happening more frequently these days. Um, and, and you couldn't help but be inspired hearing about the extraordinary work that they're doing. But you also could not help but be heartbroken to hear their worries and their anxieties. Some of them are parents, and they talked about how their children were asking, are we going to be forced out of the country? Are we, are we going to be rounded up? Why do people treat us like that? Conversations that you shouldn't have to have with children. Not in this country. Not at this moment. And that's an anxiety echoed in letters I get from Muslim Americans around the country. I've had people write to me and say, I feel like I'm a second-class citizen. I've had mothers write and say, My heart cries every night thinking about how our daughter might be treated at school. A girl from Ohio, 13 years old, told me, I'm scared. A girl from Texas signed her letter, a confused 14-year-old trying to find her place in the world. These are children just like mine. And the notion that they would be filled with doubt and questioning their place in this great country of ours at a time when they've got enough to worry about. It's hard being a teenager already. That's, that's not who we are. We're one American family, and when any part of our family starts to feel separate or second class or targeted, it tears at the very fabric of our nation. 